I the Lord of sea and sky I have heard my people cry All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night I will go Lord if you lead me I will hold your people in my heart I the Lord my people's pain I have wept for love of them they turned away I will break their hearts of stone give them hearts for love alone I will speak my word to them whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. In the name of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you today. Our logistics are different this year. Normally, we would be surrounding the graves of our loved ones on the first Sunday of July as we come from far and near, from within the parish, from all over the country, and from beyond, synchronising holidays so that we might be here on this day at this time to pray and to stand before the graves of our loved ones that have gone before us as a sign of faith as we pray for them, as a sign of solidarity with them and as a sign of hope in the resurrection of their lives and of our own yet to come as well. We can't do that for obvious reasons this year, but the depth of prayer is no less sincere even if it's done from a remove of the graveyard at this time. And so, as I pray these prayers for and with you, for all our deceased, those who've died of late and are fresh in our minds and hearts, those who are long deceased, we remember not only the deceased here buried in the graveyard on the Glen Road, on Craigsbray, but we remember too those buried in the old graveyard here in Glenties and in Kilrain and indeed in all the burial places throughout the parish. I welcome you all as we join in prayer this day. Sisters and brothers, we gather in faith as God's people so that 
through our union with one another in Christ, our departed members may be helped by our prayers and the living may be consoled always by hope. We're often reminded in the scriptures that it's always a good and a wholesome thing to pray for our dead. It is one of our great marks of being a Christian and above all, it shows that we care for our dead. And during this time of prayer and remembrance for the faithful departed, we ask God to unite us even more closely with the members of our families, our friends of our community who have passed from this life, especially those buried here and in the other burial grounds throughout our parish. And let this prayer be a reminder to us all that we do not have here an everlasting place, but the everlasting city is yet to come. We seek a city that is not with us yet. So we pray in love to the risen Christ for all our dead, as we hope that we too shall be remembered in prayer and we come together as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, whose mercy the souls of the faithful departed are at rest. Bless these graves, we pray you, and send your holy angel to guard over them. Free from all bonds of sin, the souls of all whose bodies are buried here, or whose mortal ashes are buried here, so that they may find joy in your company with all the saints of light. And we hear from the New Testament, from St. Paul in his letter to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain that after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and he pleads for us. So nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we're troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked. For these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I'm certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, nor any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And it's to Jesus, that good shepherd, that we seek consolation and hope from, the one who guards us and leads us to green pastures. And so we pray that psalm, the one that we're most familiar with, the one that consoles the most, from the scriptures, from the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia. And our gospel reading is taken from that of St. Luke. It was about the sixth hour and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with these words, he breathed his last. 
Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put him in a tomb which was hewn in stone, in which no one had yet been laid. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with the spices they'd prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes, but the two men said to them, Look, why are you looking among the dead for someone who's alive? He is not here, he has risen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These last months have been so unpredictable, so changeable. Our lifestyles, our whole mode of being has been curtailed, has been challenged. Our movements have been restricted and we've had to learn things anew and we've had to cope with new realities. For some, those realities have involved trying to cope with grief in a new and in a restricted way as well. Not any one of us has gone through the last number of months without change. And so the unpredictability of life brings its own challenges, just as it has done and will do for each of us as we have or we will contend with death of a loved one. Sickness unto death, sudden death, tragic death, even maybe at times violent death. These are things that the human condition and the spirit has to try to deal with. But we don't do so on our own. The Good Shepherd is there to help us. The promise of eternal life is held out to us. And we find comfort in different ways visiting the graveyard being one of them. Another way, perhaps too, that we find solace and we find a way to equip ourselves in prayer and in memory is the comfort of a candle. And just as I mentioned, we can't plan for anything. As you can see, the candle that was lit has gone out. But it reminds us so well that since the earliest days of Christianity, candles well, they've symbolised the pure light of Christ that pierces darkness, overcomes evil and ultimately offers hope to the world. And we know that the early Christians, that they burned candles at the burial places of the martyrs in the catacombs in the early centuries. And the light of the candle, it burned as a silent vigil in remembrance of the person. And even the word vigil comes from the Latin meaning waiting or watching. And when we light a candle in the church, at home, in remembrance anywhere for our loved ones, we too wait and we too watch until we can be reunited with them. And through the Middle Ages and into the present time, people also lit candles in church in front of a saintly image as we still do, as a way to ask favours or intercession. And when we light votive candles for our loved ones, we pray for the repose of their souls. We can also light that candle when we ask our loved ones to pray for our intercessions. So remember that the light of the candle, even the tiniest candle, pierces through dark darkness. It illumines the path and gives us all hope. It's not for coincidence that we pray that prayer eternal light grant unto them O Lord let perpetual light shine upon them may they rest in peace Amen and it's to those that we now pray asking intercession and we pray to God for them Lord Jesus Son of the Living Father give our parents and those who are our grandparents the reward of their labours in the happiness of your home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your cross and resurrection, you won immortal life. Grant to all our relatives and friends the joys of your kingdom. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death, you robbed our death of its punishment. Hear our prayers for all your departed. Grant them that peace for which they always hoped. Lord, have mercy. Risen Christ, because of your infinite love, you were obedient even unto death on the cross of Calvary. Bring to life all who sleep in peace. Keep all the dead in your care, those we have loved, and those perhaps who have no one to remember them from family or generations that have gone. Lord, have mercy. Father of all consolation, from whom nothing is hidden, you know the faith of those who have gone before, and you know those little ones, children, who have died before and after birth and in their tender years. May they find comfort in knowing that they are in your sight. May their parents and elders know that they are with you. Lord, have mercy. And may the most compassionate Virgin Mary commend to her son the souls of all our dead, so that through the intercession of Mary, they may joyfully enter their home in heaven, which they long for and for which they always hoped. Amen. And it's to those very people that we give focus to now, particularly those names that we will call out that have died in the past year since the last great gathering here for our dead. We remember them. Molly McCracken, Molanti Boyle and Cookstown. Pat Joe Byrne, Dibbon and Art Patrick. Mary Bridget Fury. Roanfield House, Donegal Town, Minawanya and the Nyarn Road. Margaret Mannering, Mininyal and Scotland. Bridget Sweeney, Letcherilly. Tony Boyle, Art Patrick. Shemoth O'Kinagia, Charleville Road, Rathmines, Dublin, and originally Main Street, Glenties. Fay Griffin, Station Road. Patricia Mannering, Minignal, and the Netherlands. John Lavelle, Claus Neve Connell. Jim McGuinness, Art Patrick. Annie Theresa Byrne, The Church Road. Johnny Kelly, The Nyarn Road. Michael Byrne, Thrymnasilla. Emer Hearn, Lower Kimmage Road, Dublin 6. Bridget Hegarty, Stranagloch and Minalaragan. Mark O'Donnell, Mulnaminia. Huey Rorty, Stone Park Apartments and Drimala Francis Brennan, The Main Street Maureen Phelan, The Main Street Sadie Herity, Straboy and Maria Griffin, Claus Neve Connell For these and for all, Lord, may that eternal light shine on them brightly, we pray you And so, just for a few seconds, we compose ourselves as we think of the names that have been read and all others belonging to Glenties who are buried elsewhere and all our other loved ones who have died of late and whose memories burn deep in our heart. Lord, we will light a candle in memory of our loved ones. May the light of the flickering flame break through the darkness of my grief and allow me to see more clearly your kindness and mercy. May the light from the candle assure me that my prayers for my loved ones and me are reaching you in heaven. Amen.
we will give a cursory blessing to the graves after this ceremony concludes. But we offer, first of all, a decade of the rosary as we call to mind and focus on Antashiri, the resurrection of Jesus. And by that, we have hope that where Jesus has gone, we will all follow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, the hour for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And before we come to our concluding prayer, I thank all of you who tend so generously throughout the year and hold sentry in prayer and faith over the graves of your deceased. And we thank abundantly the men on the scheme under the auspices of uh, Yvonne McGinley, uh, who care for and keep our graveyard looking so well from year to year. We thank you sincerely for your work and for all who help and whose attention is paid to the graveyard here, to the graveyard committee, the little committee that we have, and also to our grave diggers too, who carry out the work of reverently placing our beloved uh, to rest here in the sacred soil and to our undertakers, um, our local undertaker and those others who occasionally come here too to carry out their duty on behalf of families. I'd like to thank and pay tribute to all who have helped to make this possible um, so that we could have a means of prayer in remembrance and to mark this weekend. My thanks to Joe Brennan from Joe's Tech who made all the technical ability ready for us all and to Aidan Gavigan for providing the beautiful music and to Joe Gavigan for helping with wiring and with sound and with uh, electricity. I thank them all. We have our final prayer. Lord God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies beyond counting. Keep us mindful that life is short and the hour of death unknown. Let your spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, 
that we may serve you in union with the whole church, sure in faith, strong in hope, perfect in love. And when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And once again we pray, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And wherever you are this day, as you watch, as you listen, as you pray, as you remember, we call upon God's blessing on you all. And Tahara Kruhi and Wakahwani Agas and Spirit Niva Nivu Giawine Chrehiel Musil. Amen.
for me suffered and died sweet shall my weeping be grief surely leading me nearer my God to thee Sweet. 